Becky, my channel is What Beck Sews. Welcome back if you're a subscriber and welcome if you're new. Today's a Friday Sews where I'm going to talk about what I'm up to with you. I hope you're all well, I hope you're all happy and I hope you've all had plenty of time to sew. It is actually a true Friday Sews because I am filming this on a Friday. Normally I would have this up and ready for you Friday morning um, but unfortunately this week, well this last couple of weeks, it's been quite manic so you've got me on a Friday um, and I'm trying to do this very quickly in what little lunch break I have. So it's going to be quite a quick one guys but I couldn't go a Friday without saying hello especially as last week I had popped out some pre-recorded content for you because I was in the mist and the chaos that has been Jazz and Wow advent calendars for the last couple of weeks. So for those of you that don't know, I run a little small Etsy shop called Jazz and Wow. It's a shop with handmade resin buttons and earrings, um, as well as other accessories as well. But um, I decided that this year I would do some advent calendars and I did some buttons only advent calendars and then I did like a mixed Jazz and Wow resin handmade good um handmade goods calendar and it's been fabulous it's been a massive learning experience and it's been absolutely manic but everything is now out winging their way to everybody so for most people in the uk that has ordered from me if you haven't received it um, already you will probably receive it by monday at the latest because they've all been shipped um, and then I have had orders outside of the UK, in France, America, Canada and even New Zealand. So for those of you that have ordered in those areas, they are winging their way to you and all of the tracking numbers are in my orders where I completed for you to go and see if you want to know where your parcel is. So that has been my chaos for the last few weeks. It's why I haven't been on here. It's also why I haven't done a huge amount of sewing. Um, I have a craft fair tomorrow and I have one next Saturday as well which I've also been getting ready for and I am getting my Christmas collection ready for Jazz and Wow so yes it's all go 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 at the moment but I know you guys are here for the sewing content so let's talk about what I have managed to get sewn so should we talk about what I'm wearing because this is one of the things I have very quickly whipped up I have never had a pattern come through that I have immediately ordered and then immediately sent for AO printing and then got sewn up as quickly as I have this jumper. So this is the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern that she released this week. Um, it got released on Tuesday. It's called the Drew jumper now the drew sweatshirt is basically a raglan sweatshirt that can be color blocked um or that it and it can be cropped or it can be like full length or you could have the option not to color block at all or you could have the option to color block in various different ways so there's lots of move like not movement but there's lots of sort of um ways that this can be manipulated to make your own style so what have i made I have made the, um, I have gone with a colour block, but not like to the to the top where you can have the different coloured sections of the arms and the sleeve. Um, I've picked this fabric here, which I had in my stash. It's been languishing since last year. I bought it from Little, Le Little Legs Fabrics. And then I got this cream sweatshirt in fabric off a swaps table at Staffordshire Social to actually make something for my daughters, but I've ended up making something for me instead. And then and I've got some black ribbon that I got when I was at Scottish Frocktails and I bought this from the same shop that I bought my Velboa from. I can't remember what it was called. Um, so yeah, I have done the, the cream sweatshirting across the top. I have done a band here of the same fabric that I've done the bodice and the back in. I have got my ribbon obviously on my wrists and my um, neckline and I've also got it on the um, bottom of my jumper. This is made in the cropped length. Now I didn't know if I'd like this in the cropped length because I do wear high-waisted trousers but I have a mum tum so I don't particularly tend to wear a lot of things that have got crop on them and I'm not sure how comfortable I feel with it with the crop as it is but I will show you um so this is I've got it on just with a pair of purple jeans today but you can see it get an idea of where it comes to um and you can see there at the back 
as well. Um, now, obviously, if I raise my arms, you've got a little, little peek at the belly. But it's an oversized fit and it's just lush. I feel so comfy in it. I love the fact that you've got this colour blocking. I, I took some footage that, um, the evening that I made it. So I'll pop that in here for you to see. Um, I've got it on with a pair of leggings. Excuse the state of the leggings. They are covered in fluff from where I was actually making it up. So all down my back, there's like white fluffy spots. That's all it is, I promise. Um, so yeah, I really, really like the way that this looks on with the leggings. I feel like it's quite flattering with me on with the leggings. Whereas I know that the jeans, because they're purple, they probably stand out a little bit more. But um, yeah. I love it. I do love this. I do want to make plenty, plenty more. Um, but I was just so excited to make it. And it was one of those where I knew that I needed a bit of an instant gratification make. And this was an instant gratification make because it comes together really quickly. I got this sewn up in an hour. That's how quick it came together. Now, I am a quick sewer. And for those of you that are a bit slower, it might take a little bit longer. Because obviously with a raglan, getting it all the white way around, the only thing I say about a raglan is it can, for those of you that are beginners, can get confusing. So just make sure that you use the notches and you make sure that you've got the neckline in the right place. Um, and you don't end up sewing up the arms together as the bodice, because traditionally that's what a lot of people tend to do when they're making a raglan. Because the arms are always longer and you tend to think that the arms should be shorter and that it's the way the mind works. I don't know if anybody else would agree with me with a raglan. So they're the only things I'd say you'd need to be careful of. Now, I've made this in a size six. Um, Tilly and the button sizing by her garment measurements put me in a seven. But I've made it in a six. I size down in pretty much all of her patterns anyway, um, apart from her stretch ones um, from the stretch book. Um, so yeah, I've made this in a six and it fits me great. And because it's a raglan, normally with Tilly's patterns, I have an issue with the the shoulders. And this is why I actually quite like wearing raglan sleeve tops because there is no issue there because it's just, it's like a dropped type style shoulder. So I don't have that where I have my narrow shoulder and I always end up with something sort of slightly over the edge because it's raglan, it automatically drops down. So that's a bonus and a win-win as well. So that is the first thing I have sewn up in the last couple of weeks. It probably is the one piece of sewing that is complete in the last couple of weeks. Um, let me know what you think. And if you've already made the Drew, purchased the Drew, or I'm planning to make the, the Drew, uh, let me know in the comments below. For some reason, that was a bit of a mouthful. I feel like I haven't vlogged for ages. It's only been two weeks and I feel like I haven't vlogged for ages. So what have I also been sewing? So I started working on the um, Tilly and the Buttons Thea's, which I feel like I've been a bit of a mammoth mission and that I've been doing these forever. I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna sneeze. All done. I think I'm coming down with a cold. I've been quite sniffly the last couple of days and sneezing has been sort of an uh, ongoing thing. So these are the Tilly and the Buttons Thea's, my ongoing saga that I have made a completely unwearable toile of. I have made a wearable toile and now I am making my final version. And this is the fabric I've been making the final version in. So I had a, I think it was last Sunday, I had a good few hours to tackle this and I haven't finished them. And I did stop and do this in between, which I don't normally do. I'm usually a start to finish sewer because if I don't do that, it goes in a whip box. But it won't happen with these because it's just been an ongoing thing and I needed something quick to sew up because I felt like I've been missing sewing. So this is still very much work in progress. I'm gonna finish this weekend. So these are the front legs and I have put in the pockets. The pockets are in this gorgeous Lady McElroy fabric that was a so uh, style arc hope woven dress that I've taken to pieces as part of the upcycle um, challenge. Now, I didn't use that to actually make anything, but I've got the fabric to one side. So I've been using the scraps for things like this. Now I know it doesn't particularly go with this particular fabric, but I know it's got animals all over it and I thought it was quite appropriate, but you can't see, only I can see the snippet inside and I just love it. So they're in there. I have got the zip fly in the right way, might I add. So the first time I made the unwearable toile, I put a zip fly in because I wanted to practice and I ended up 
um, getting it in the right way but when I did a bit of top stitching I ended up sewing it down so you couldn't even open it um, then when I did the unwearable uh, when I did the wearable twirl I put the zip fly in again because I wanted to get a true idea on the fit and I put that one in backwards so this one I have done yay congratulations feel like I need a round of applause for this um, and it's all perfect and it's in absolutely brilliantly so that's the front legs done all pretty much all together everything they need doing all the tricky stuff is done i've also done the back legs so you can see here this is a back leg i've got the pockets on nicely blending in um and i've got the other one here um, they need putting together and then the whole thing just needs sewing up and then the waistband needs putting on so it sounds like there's a lot to do but there's not it's the easy stuff is left to do the quick and easy stuff so my intentions are to do some sewing tonight um and get them completely finished with any luck so that is the tilly and the buttons thea trousers hopefully this time next week i will be here with them on showing you my final version and then i might put the pattern away and not think about it ever again um no that's not true i do actually if these fit me the way i think they're going to when they're done now i feel like i've come to terms with the pattern and the fit i have um this fabric here actually um it's like a twill fabric and i have um, i mean this won't be uh straight after this make because i need a break from them but I really like the idea of having a wide leg pair of trousers in these because it's quite a nice thick fabric. Be lovely for the winter months. And I was thinking that would look great with some sequin kind of top or something like that as a really nice dressier outfit. Um, obviously a plain black top because the print would be all over the bottom. But I could draw red into that or pink into that in the top half. And I just feel like it'd be like a dressy kind of version of Christmassy outfit style thing um but we'll see because I just want to get these finished and then I want to move on to another project from there just to give me a bit of a break from making the uh, trousers I'm sure some of you will relate when you've been working on the fit of a pattern for a while and I'm sure you guys are bored of hearing me talk about the theatres um so that is uh, what's been sewn in my sewing room that's everything um I have not had a chance to do anything else everything else has been concentrated purely on jazz and wow okay so they are what's new in my sewing room and that I've been getting up to from a sewing perspective but I have actually sewn a couple of other garments that I haven't shared with you yet because they were part of the challenge, which is the Sew Up Cycle 2024 challenge. That's run by Becky from Notes in the Sewing Room and it's also run by the lovely Karen from Sew Little Time as well. Now, this challenge is brilliant. We can use either old garments, tablecloths, all sorts of things to upcycle into something wearable. And this year I've actually taken two garments that were unwearable for me and made them into something wearable. So the first one that I want to talk about, I didn't actually enter into the Instagram challenge because, well, I, you'll see from the picture. I had done it, but I had not taken the time to take the photographs and I chucked it on over a jumpsuit and looked at how ridiculous the two looked together and thought, I am not posting that on Instagram, but I will share it with you guys. So the first thing that I took was my Mrs. Claus dress. This is a South Bank sweater dress that I've made from a gorgeous red fabric that I got from Roy's Fabrics in Leicester um, a couple of years ago when I went to the dressmaker's ball. And I turned it into a South Bank, but what I'd done is I'd removed the band or hem band off of the bottom of the South Bank, bank, South Bank sweater and lengthened the pattern um, and as a result of it it gave me a very triangular dress because the sweatshirting fabric was quite thick and structured and then on top of that it was red so I looked like Mrs Claus in the dress I'll pop a picture of what it did look like um, now the sweatshirting fabric is actually really good quality really nice and thick and I didn't want to lose that and I knew that it would be something that either when I'm working in here when I'm working from home and I don't move very often or when I am sitting sewing of an evening or even just chilling out on the sofa at home I would get lots of wear out of it it would be very comfortable and I could wear it if it was a top so this was a really straightforward upcycle I literally just took a lobbed a couple of inches off of it took it back up to my uh, lower hip and um, hemmed it I could have maybe bought it in a little bit, but I didn't. 
and I think it looks absolutely fine as it is. Now I'm going to pop in the picture here of what I've turned it into. You can see I am wearing it with something that it doesn't go with, that it doesn't match because I have my Sirocco jumpsuit on with underneath it. So apologies for the photo not being very good, but I just wanted to show you what I'd done and how I'd taken something quite simple that I wasn't wearing and turned it into something that I now can wear. And you know what? I've worn it probably about four or five times because I do have a pair of red joggers in exactly the same material and I like wearing them together. So there's one upcycle. The other upcycle, which I am very, very proud of, is the Whitcomb top by Solar Pattern. So this was a style arc dress. It's the Hope Woven dress that I had made. It was the very first one I'd ever made and I've lost quite a bit of weight since I first made it, although I still like I'm still having this battle with my weight. I've lost a lot of weight since that. Um, and it's it's just too big. I mean, it's an oversized pattern anyway, so it really is just too big. And I wasn't getting the wear. But it wasn't just the sizing on this particular one. The fabric is leopard print. And we all know I love a bit of leopard print. I mean, leopard print's the way forward, guys. But it is in a very light pink that just washes me out. It's not a colour I can wear. So I decided that I was going to try and turn it into something that I could wear. So I'd need to contrast the fabric to make it more wearable against my face. Um, yes, I do think in that much detail about how to get something that doesn't fit, it doesn't fit or suit me to be something that is suitable and wearable. I then also think about, thought, think about, thought about, you English right, Becky, thought about what garment I could wear, um, or what garment I would get the wear out of. And a blouse would have been perfect because I go to work a couple of times a week and I like wearing trousers in this season. So I could pair it up with a pair of black trousers and that would be really nice. And I came up with the Whitcomb um, top by Solo Patterns. Now, the high cuff sweater by Assembly Line as well would work really well for doing this kind of transformation. I just took the detached the skirt from the um, Hope Woven dress. Um, I managed to get out of that the bodice and the back bodice. And then I think I got the sleeves out of the top bodice. If I'm No, I didn't. I took the original sleeves that were on there and I got the bodice and I got the sleeves out of there because they were raglan sleeves. So I just cut at the side, opened them out and then I managed to cut out because the sleeves are just slightly smaller than the hope. They're not as wide as the hope. So I managed to get them out of that. So, yeah, it was it was an easy thing to get out of the amount of fabric that I had. But I just think it looks so much better now because I've put in a black neckband and black cuffing, which just brings out a, almost like a contrasting effect. It brings out the black that's in the print and therefore I think it suits me more and doesn't wash me out half as much as the dress did previously. Now, hopefully, as I've been talking through this, I've popped in some images of the before and after so you can see exactly what it is I'm talking about because I don't have them to hand. They're upstairs. So... That's everything from a sewing front. Now, um, I do have some plans for the coming week. Um, I'd like to obviously finish my Thea's, which is a no brainer, but I think that'll be quite quick because I've got some time to sew on Sunday. I'm thinking about starting the Hovea jacket by Megan Nielsen. I've talked about this in previous plans. I wanna make up my toile. Now, I have this fabric here to make the toile up in. It's like a jersey quilt fabric I'm sure it's a polyester of some kind I've got this really cheap off of legend textiles um and it will serve more as a cardigan because it's really lightweight than say the fabric that I've got which is Minerva which I'll pop in here which is a gorgeous quilted fabric but I want to make sure I've got the sizing right and I want to see how it looks and how it fits before I cut into this fabric that's 42 pound a meter um to this fabric that's one pound 99 a meter bit of a no-brainer so I'm going to cut this up now this would again wash me out because it's a brilliant white so I'm going to make a little frayer top which will take me five minutes to do really well it won't take me five minutes a bit of an exaggeration it'll take me about an hour to do so if I wear that underneath this those two contrasting colors means that I should wear to wear it without it washing me out and this will become something that I can wear as part of my wardrobe so I'm going to make the Hovea jacket out of this this weekend, my Freya and my Theos. That's all I want to aim to get done by the time I'm back with you next Friday. But hopefully if I manage to get all three of those done, I've actually got an entire outfit to share and style for you. So that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? 
and that's it one thing i will say because i know i've had lots of questions about the advent calendars just whilst i remember i don't have any left i'm afraid there won't be any more being made this year so what has sold is all that i have um the new collection will be released next week um from jazz and wow so keep an eye out from that because there's lots of goodies that would make really good stocking fillers um little presents gifts for friends and things like that so yeah have a look when that comes out if you're over on my instagram for jazz and wow you will see um and i will link that down below but you will see me pop up sneak peeks all this week so that's it from me today i hope you've enjoyed today's friday so i hope you're all well i hope you will get plenty of time to sew this weekend and let me know as always what you're up to in the comments down below because i do love to chat with you and if you don't already subscribe don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button for more content from me and the notifications bell because it'll let you know whenever i bring something out all right guys have a fantastic week and i'll catch you all soon bye